That was a great exchange with AOC. Oh, look, it was, uh, she asked if I was willing to engage. I don't think she wanted the answer to be yes. And I will say one of the stunning things for the little socialist from New York, <laughs> <laughs> she hadn't said a word in response. Uh, I don't think there is a response. That was too big. You know, by, people may not know this. Alan Dershowitz has said, and you disagree on a lot of politics, but he has said you were one of the smartest students that he ever taught. You were the number one debate champion in the country when you went to Harvard Law. Um, I think this may be deep waters for AOC. Fox News, Sean Hannity, and Senator Ted Cruz himself are taking victory laps after a debate discourse, discussion, whatever, he had with AOC and others about the supposed party switch. Now, what we're gonna do today is go over what we should do in situations like this because what we ain't gonna do is go back and forth with people who think they schooled you when they strategically, conveniently leave out important information. Here's how all this got started. Follow the flow. In response to Senator Ted Cruz saying, quote, Dr. King would be ashamed of how profoundly the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People have lost their way after the NAACP issued a travel advisory for the state of Florida, Kevin Cruz, a professor of history at Princeton University, said, In 1965, Dr. King called for a national boycott of the state of Alabama, saying that Democratic Governor George Wallace's policies constituted a reign of terror against black Americans. Then, Norman Ornstein, emeritus scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, quote tweeted that with, guess who would have been first in line to filibuster against the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act? Yes, Ted Cruz. Then Tedward said, nonsense, that shameful filibuster was led by Democrats, your party. My party, the Republicans, proudly voted for the Civil Rights Act in much higher percentages than the racist Dems. So, AOC, who decided to not say very much about this before or after, at least not yet, replied with, why don't you go ahead and tell people what happened to the parties after that, Ted, insinuating that the parties switched. So, Teddy Trumpkin went seven tweets deep with nonsense, but he started with, first, the Dem Party founded the KKK, then the Dem Party wrote Jim Crow laws, then the Dem Party filibustered the Civil Rights Act. Now, there are several directions in which you can go with this depending on your personal political ideology. A leftist may say, U.S. Senator Strom Thurmond of South Carolina, who, as was alluded to earlier, has a record for the longest filibuster, spoke for 24 hours and 18 minutes against the Civil Rights Act of 1957, according to U.S. Senate records. At that time, he was a Democrat. Switched to Republican a few years later, wonder why. Anyways, Thurman was not the only lawmaker to filibuster on that issue. Teams of senators consumed 57 days filibustering between March 26th and June 19th, the day the Civil Rights Act of 1957 passed. Moving on, conservatives might bring up Robert Byrd, former Democratic senator and U.S. House rep out of West Virginia, who was way racist. He organized and led a local chapter of the Ku Klux Klan in the 1940s, an action he later described as quote, the greatest mistake I ever made. He disavowed his past. Can you erase racism? Either way, the right post pictures of Byrd with Obama, Hillary, and Biden, who very much loved and appreciated Byrd before he died. But it's to the point now that I don't even want you to even bring up the Southern strategy, Dixiecrats, Nixon, Reagan, who also used to be a Democrat. No, just know that the KKK, Confederates, Congress people who wrote Jim Crow laws and filibustered the Civil Rights Act, they were all conservatives trying to conserve their values, which was whiteness and white people. The switch was along ideological lines. That's it. It's weird how political leanings isn't stressed in this debate more often. I mean, how else do you explain why minority representation in Congress, which was once exclusive to the GOP, has changed to being a feature among Dems and not really repubs? Do people of color feel more comfortable around liberals? And trust me when I say that none of what I'm claiming is to suggest that Democrats, past and present, aren't racist. But there is a distinction that needs to be made in that Democrats, as in the party, didn't start the KKK. People who were Democrats did. I'm just saying that the racists from the 1800s and 1900s, Confederates and Nazis, sure do think that modern day Republicans are one of them. Do racists feel more comfortable around conservatives? Thank you for watching. Jessica Burbank called it. 
Ron DeSantis wants to make America Florida. This teacher can tell you what that's like. The link to that video is in the description below. My content can be found by clicking the Jeff Wiggins hashtag or visiting my YouTube channel, We Gonna Be Alright. And as always, my architect knows Japanese.